Hello. Just give some people time to find me and adjust my camera. Hmm. Hello. Good morning. No, good afternoon. It's no longer morning. Hello. <laughs> How's everyone doing? gonna adjust this camera. Can everyone see that okay there? Welcome. Hello, hello. I'll give everyone a um, couple minutes to find me um, and to tune in to my live session today. So happy you could all join me. It's a chilly day out there. Um, so I have my tea with me here. Hello, Elaine. So I got my Bob Ross mug. <laughs> He's definitely my biggest inspiration. I have learned a lot from Bob Ross. Hello. <laughs> this tea is probably still too hot. Hope everyone's having a good Thursday. I almost said Friday, but it's Thursday, so we're almost there. So this is like our end of week um, painting, pick me up, give us um, that little extra boost. Uh, maybe this could be a gift for Thanksgiving. Hello, Linda. Thank you for joining. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Hmm. Okay, it's not too hot. Let me see the time. Yep, so I'm, I'll start at about 12. So there's about two minutes still. I thought I'd come on like a little bit sooner just so people could find me because I know sometimes it's tricky to find a live. Um, so just keep refreshing the page if you don't see me. Um, and a little bit of housekeeping. I wanted to say, you know, about if we see those links while I'm going live here where it says, you know, sign up or live stream or something like that. Just don't even um, click that or touch it because I don't ever need your credit card or anything like that, especially for a live. They're always free. I'm just doing that um, to show my gratitude for you all um, and supporting me. And I like to give back and share my passions with you guys. So don't click those links. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Hi, Debbie from Manitoba. Cool. So good morning out there. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, say where you're from. I see there's 18 of us so far. I'm from Listwell and my name is Megan and I run my little small business here called Painting with Megan um, and I'm in Listwell, Ontario. So welcome if it's your first time. I see some familiar names or faces on here. Yay, lunch break. <laughs> Are you painting Dennis or just watching? You're welcome to do both. This will be available for um, later on. I know it's kind of a strange time. I do, um, like I have like a split shift for my job. So this allows me to be able to come on in the day. And then I figure whoever can't join can just watch later. So yay. <laughs> So while uh, more people are coming on finding me, I'm just going to go over um, the colors that I have today. New York, very cool. I would love to go there. <laughs> so I'm using blue and the brand that I have is Liquitech Basics. It really doesn't matter what you have um, as long as you have paint <laughs> or chalk. I don't know what you're using, but you can use anything really. Calgary, wow, so it's morning there. My first time, we'll just watch for now. Can you tell me what you're painting? Yes. Hi from Niagara on the Lake, hello. Oh, yay, I'm so glad. All right, so yeah, this is what we're painting. So I call them autumn at dusk, but it could be dawn, so it could be either or. And this, I will be teaching you step by step. Um, this is made with acrylics. And this is a 12 by 12 canvas here. 
which is also the same size canvas that I'm using here. Um, it does not matter if you don't have a 12 by 12, you might just have to adjust according to your size, whether it's smaller or larger. Yeah, no problem. So I put that up there. And if you need me to bring it closer at any point, just let me know that I have it there for you to see. Um, oh, hi from Retina from Barry will be watching tonight. Thank you for sharing your talent. Oh, thank you. Thanks everyone. <laughs> All right. So yes, the colors. So I have blue, just some primary blue. I have primary yellow. I have red, good old primary colors. I also have black and white. And I have some green. We don't really need a lot of green. Believe it or not, there is actually a little bit of green in the sky and water. Um, and then brown. So it looks like a fair bit of you are here. Um, and I'll go ahead and get started then, just so I can get this recording for those who may be um, just doing it while they're on a break at home, like me. <laughs> So, I have my paint palette here, just using a fancy little plate, <laughs> and I'm going to start with white paint, and I'll be putting it onto here. Now, this is great for beginners, um, intermediate, if you have any questions at any time, just please let me know in the comments, let me know if I'm going too fast, too slow, I will do my best to help you from afar here. Hello, Marlissa from Aurelia. Yeah, sounds good. Be watching later on. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting white on my palette. Can't even see it, but it's there. For brushes today, I'm going to have a variety of brushes. So I have a large Filbert brush. I have a medium brush. Hi, Lori. Okay, sounds good. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Sue. And I'm going to use a small brush as well. And then I had put in the, the description that I would like to use like an old kind of like scruffled up brush. Um, so something that is, you know, the bristles are starting to fade. Let me get it. I've just been reorganizing my art room. Um, so here we are. So yeah, this brush here, as you can see, it's like very frail, very old. That's actually perfect for those middle trees up there. So that's what we'll do later on. And if you don't have that, just let me know and I can show you how to do it as well. Hi, Andrea. Yay, sounds good, Lori. All right, so I'm gonna use this large brush here. I'm going to dip it into water. The only rule I got is don't have your drink, okay? Don't have your drink too close to your water. Cause that's not gonna be good. <laughs> I've done that, it's gross. And I got my Bob Ross mug to support me here. <laughs> I'm just so cold. I just can't warm up today. It's freezing out there. Or at least where I am anyways. So I have white on both sides. And if you know me by now and have been following, I always start by just painting my whole canvas white. So you can go ahead and do that. The reason I do that is so I can prime my canvas. And as you can see, I'm literally just putting it on everywhere and anywhere. At this point, it does not matter how I put this white on. So you can go back and forth, up and down, crisscross, however you like. Warm up. We're going to warm up our muscles here, her paint muscles, and just coat that canvas in white. And I actually put on a fair bit amount of white so it can stay wet. Um, that's another reason I coat my canvas in white um, is because it helps with blending later on. So it's kind of like a wet on wet technique. Um, and also it helps fill in like little tiny holes that sometimes happen in the canvas if you just put like the direct color. Sometimes um, you need to put more coats on because there'll be like little dots showing almost. 
So yeah, this just helps with that. Is anyone using like a super duper large canvas today? <laughs> this would take a long time. <laughs> I've been really enjoying just making like smaller paintings lately um, and I've also really been enjoying painting on wood lately. I've been working with Jeff from JB's Adventures Crafts and painting so he brings me like little wood art pieces that he's made and then I'll paint the background. That's been really fun too. So I'm just getting out more white because I ran out. So that means I am using quite a bit and making it pretty thick on there. So that way it just stays wet a little bit longer. And Joy, are you in here? I am was also waiting for my um, great aunt Joy to join us today for her first time painting. So I'm not too sure if she found us yet. But if you're in here, say hello so I know you're here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, still white. Woo, you guys are doing good. Okay, so once you have it white, um, give me a heart or thumbs up so I know where everybody's at. And we'll continue on. The next color I'll be using is blue. So you can put blue out while you're waiting. And I'm not cleaning my brush because we don't need to. So I'm just putting a little bit of blue on my canvas here. There we go. I don't know if you can hear the music. Um, I have just like jazz music playing on YouTube. Uh, but I don't own the rights to this music. That's what Facebook wants me to say. <laughs> oh, Gita from India. So cool. What time is it there? That's awesome. <laughs> Welcome. So if you guys are ready for blue, um, I didn't clean the brush off and I'm still going to use the same one. And I'm dipping into blue here. All right, so we are going to basically be covering this whole canvas in blue, but we'll just start in sections for now. Um, so first we're gonna do the sky. So we're gonna wanna work on the background so we can build up to the foreground, which is those trees across. So with my blue, I'm going to be doing an X motion. So they're like almost little like crisscrosses. Thank you. <laughs> So I'll show you there, just move that a bit. So I'm just kind of starting on my left, it doesn't matter where you start. And I'm just doing crisscross X's. And as you can see, as I go across, it starts to blend for me already because it's still wet and that's totally okay. Hi Kaylee. And once I get to that point where, oh, I can see that it's quite faded, I'm just going to get more blue and start Crossing again, X's, just like so. And then once you get across, you're gonna go back. And I forgot this corner. So let's kind of leave it like that for now. And this makes like almost like the illusion of like far, far away clouds. And then we'll build up and we'll add other clouds too. And a, and a moon, of course. <laughs> Okay, so X across, and then you're going to want to just go over it again. And it should be moving quite nicely for you. As you can see, mine is um, not giving me any delay. Um, if you feel like it's kind of um, drying on you, I guess, just put a, like a little bit of water. Not too much, though, because you'll get a water drop. So something like that, and then you're going to want to blend it across. So just very from one end to the other blending just like so you just go up and down till it looks nice and smooth you can do your edges I'm just kind of tapping some of the edge parts that are showing just like that just blend it back and forth and you might already start to see some 
kind of like faint cloud effect going on there. Let me know how that's going for you. Or if you have questions, let me know. We're going to go down about halfway of our canvas. So once we've practiced going X's and then blending it across from one side of the canvas to the other, you can use a little bit of water at this point to help it move. That will definitely make a difference. And how's that going for you guys so far? Let me know. I'm gonna take this tea bag out of my Oh, I'm still cold. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna dip into blue again. I'm still not cleaning my brush. And so since we're going halfway, I'm just going to make X's again. And you can just keep going until they start looking more faded. That's cool, and then just get some more. And just crisscross your way. So I'm just going like. Hi, Leo. Once you have your X's across, that's when you could use a little water now at this point because it's probably drying more, um, especially the white underneath. And then you're just going to want to go from one side of the canvas to the other and blend back and forth. And you can take your time with it going back and forth, or you can go fast. I usually just go a little slower because I find that just catches more paint. And as you can see, I just keep repeating going back and forth until I get that like desired smoothened space. And you'll know um, as you're doing it. And if you like it a little more texture, then that's totally cool too. Um, because in the end, this is your painting, so, and we're all going to have our own unique style, which is awesome, because that's what art is. It's all unique. And art, to me, is just like a therapy. It just keeps me sane. <laughs> there we go. And then, yeah, you can do your sides if you want to. Usually, I paint my sides black, but I don't do that on the live, because... That'd be pretty boring to watch. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. So it's about halfway. Should have a nice um, blended sky. And at this point, I'm going to clean the brush just so I can get off some of that excess paint that I probably, that you or I, both of us, have a buildup of by now on the brush. There we go, that was a really weird sentence. <laughs> Up when you're ready. Hi, Heather. Are you guys painting today? We just started, so you can join still. So I'll catch you up. So I'll just wait for a couple thumbs up or hearts. And no worries, take your time. Okay, I hope this isn't freezing because it, I just saw myself lag. <laughs> I see now, thumbs up, cool. <laughs> um, just trying to get this into focus sorry if i keep like moving the camera there we go perfect okay so we have our sky and now we can work on the water the water is basically the same thing except for we're not going to do the x's we can just literally just blend back and forth using water to make water so you'll still need blue you'll still need white on your palette in case this is dry so i'm just putting some blue, refreshing my blue, and putting a little bit of white just in case you need it. And what I'm going to do, so that brush is cleaned off, um, just because mine was getting all gunky. 
Oh, yay. Sounds good. Yeah, this will be up later if you guys want to do it. Okay, so I have blue on my brush. And now from that midpoint, I'm just going to take my blue and just start going back and forth. And I'm going back and forth until that desired smoothness. And then I'm going to get more blue again and repeat all the way down to the bottom. So as you can see, it's kind of breaking up a bit. So that means it's starting to dry underneath, which means the wet on wet technique won't work. Um, so that case, I just add a little bit of white to my blue, just so it's not like a super dark blue. So I'm just mixing a little bit of white and blue there. And then I'll be able to go back and forth. You can use water to help you do this as long as you don't use too much because it will drip and it will thin it, thin the paint on you too much. <laughs> So I just am going back and forth all the way down to the bottom. Is this um, anybody else's first time painting today? Aunt Joy, did you make it in yet? I hope she got on okay. <laughs> And I'm really happy to see that there's no like scammers in this sending out those live stream things. So that's awesome. <laughs> and if you see those, if you could report them for me, that helps me out and that helps everybody else so no one gets, um, sends their information to somebody that should not have it. So please report them if they happen to come up. Yeah, just keep working your way down. Some of you might already be down, depending on your canvas size. Maybe you're not, that's okay. I am using water and then blue, a little bit of white to help me smooth and blend this across. And at the bottom, I'm just going to use direct blue and not use white. Just so it's a little bit darker down there. Can't really hold that up there. My easel won't cooperate. So I just use dark blue at the bottom. And as I blend it, might line, that's okay. Just there's going to be a little bit of a slightly different color tone at the bottom. A little bit. To the bottom. So we have our top and bottom. You can already tell from the two different techniques that this looks more like a sky than this the water. At least to me anyways. I <laughs> it doesn't matter if it does or not. <laughs> we will put clouds and all that fun stuff too. So yeah just give me a thumbs up. Clean off your brush. Oh good I'm glad it works for you. Yeah I've been really trying to find like a good way to explain blending. So I appreciate you telling me that because it's always like, it can be tricky sometimes. So I am glad. All right. So there is a little bit of green. Now this is optional. Um, I kind of just made it like a little bit of a tealish color. So I'm going to teach you guys how to add a little bit of green into this. It's like literally a drop. So you can just get a drop of green onto your palette. Isabella, hi, sweetheart. It looks so beautiful. Thank you. 
Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, this could actually be like a good um, Thanksgiving activity for um, those, you know, I know it's a little different. We got to stay home, but you can always do this. Um, you can share it to your friends or family too, and then you can like all do it together. Fun family event. <laughs> So I'm just put a little bit of green. Well, I tried to. This was way more green than I wanted. But you want less green than that. And I'm just cleaning off my brush. I'm still going to use the same size brush. I just really like this brush. So It's a filbert. Um, I don't know what size it is. Oh, it's 16. <laughs> that doesn't matter, by the way. Just any brush you like. Okay, so I'm mixing a little bit of, so I already have blue and white there that I've already been mixing for this background. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of green. And when I mean a little bit, like I literally took like this much and I'm just going to stir that around into that white and blue area here. If you don't have any white in there and you just had blue, then just like literally add just a tiny little drop of white too. So a little bit of green, like a drop, Drop away and then like one part blue. Just make a desired color. Like this color I think is really pretty. It's like a nice teal color. <clears throat> and I'm going to put that in the water. So that is going to be more towards um, the bottom. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go back and forth. While it's still wet down there, this is best to do it. So we're just kind of changing the variation now, the tones, so that way it's not all just blue and white. And this is a good way to create like that illusion of depth, um, etc. So I'm just going to put a little bit of green and blue and blend it around in my water space. So I started at the bottom and working up. Um, you can do that too. <laughs> And you might see a slight difference. I know it looks a little different on the camera than it does to me. But if you don't see like a difference in yours, then just add a little bit more of like green or blue, right? And just experiment with the color that you like. There we go. So that one stands out a little more. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just putting some greenish blue in the water. And I'm still going back and forth. And you can use just water as well to move that a lot easier. There's a slight difference there. <laughs> Keep touching like spots on the canvas and getting them in my hand. <laughs> Okay, I'm just adding a little bit of blue to mine. We're also going to put a little bit up into the sky area. Just more towards the top. So I got that blue mix here, the greenish blue with a little bit of white. And I'm going to put that at the top because it's always darker towards the um, top of the, the sky and then towards the horizon is a little bit it's lighter. So I'm just going to put that up there. It's going to be quite dry up here. So that's when I would use a little bit of water and just tap it into my paint and then put it onto the canvas. And that helps um, blend as well. And then just being having that consistent motion of back and forth really helps with blending too. Because if you, if you go like this and then like this and like this, it's going to look broken up. So you just want to... Go back and forth like that. And this is just in the sky here. It's about an inch or so. Three fingers, let's say. Doesn't matter exactly where it is, as long as it has some sort of different color variation up there. No sky is ever like perfectly sectioned, so. There we go. And I'm just using water as well, like I have said, um, to keep moving that around a bit. There we go. Um, and then
And then what I'm going to do is clean the brush after I have some greenish blue here and greenish blue at the bottom. I'm just cleaning off the brush. And then if you have like any like, so uh, here you can see that it looks like, oh, there's the greenish blue and then there's the blue mix. So now I'm just going to use water just to smoothen that out so it's not harsh looking. So I just have my clean brush and I'm just going to just use water and go back and forth. And even if I move down a bit, that's cool too. And see how that really just softens it and blends it back in. You, ha you have to go down a little bit as well, because otherwise it won't blend as nicely. There we go. And then same thing if you had any of that down here. I didn't notice it here as much because it was wet there, whereas up here wasn't. So. That way you can learn I kind of did that on purpose. So that way you can learn how to do it dry or wet. So thought that'd be a little interesting side lesson in there. Okay, so now we've completed our background. We got our sky and water. And this part here in the middle should be dry. So that way we can start to divide this. And we can add in our um, tree there. So, we'll try to make it so you can see both. Okay, there we go. Yeah, just clean off that brush. And we're going to get out our smaller brush here. So I'm going to use um, a medium size or small brush. Um, it's flat. It doesn't matter if it's um, flat or if it's a filbert. So either one, something like these are good. Or if you have something round, smaller, anything like that. So always wet your brush. And I always tap it on the napkin. And we're going to use brown. So I'm just putting a little bit of brown because you don't need a lot. So don't waste your paint. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to dip into my brown. And I'm going to divide. So, take a look at yours. You know, we all have different sizes here. Um, I'm going to divide mine in the center. So I'm just going to uh, mark that out and then just pull across. Like that. Doesn't have to be straight. <laughs> There is a little bit of hills up there anyways, so it does not matter. Divide your sky from water. And I'm just going over that line again with my brown. This time I'm taking a little more time because I've already put the line there. Brown. It's brown. <laughs> a little bit of brown on my brush and then I just divided my sky from my water. Okay, and then that, once you have the division there, you can make two little hills on both sides. So we'll start with one I'm on my left, just backwards too, I think. Um, so I'm gonna go I don't know, mine's about two fingers. And I'll make my little hill. So I just started up high and then went low towards the center. The center point, which I'll say is right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now the hill on the other side can be higher or lower or bumpier. Um, get a little creative, but I'm just gonna make mine like my original. So just something like this, where I went from a high like a higher point, and then I just moved it down towards the center, and just made sure I blended that part there, so I don't see like any lines. And then of course, once you have these, you can fill them in. I'm just gonna leave it like that just for a minute. So if people are still doing it, they can um, see how I did that. But otherwise you can fill that in. Oops. 
With brown, of course. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fill that in with brown. I'm excited to see everyone's work out there. Or tonight. <laughs> yeah, so I don't ever take down these videos. Um, I have all of the lives I've ever done up on my page. So if it's your first time tuning in live, um, take a look at those videos. I have a good variety there. What types of paint are you using watching from the UK? Oh, so cool. Welcome. I'm using um, the brand Liquitex Basics Acrylics. I buy them here in Canada at um, Michael's, but I'm sure you could order them online. I really like these ones because this particular brand, um, it's, more, it's for beginners, um, but it also works for more advanced. It's like a mix between thin and thick. So it's not too thick or thin. That's why I like it. And I like their the colors. Like I find they're nice and bold and I like to paint my colors boldly. There we go, I'll touch that part. <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> Okay, so then, yeah, once you have your little hills there, you can clean off that little brush. Just give it a little stir in your water. And underneath, we're going to need a reflection. So we're going to have some fun with some reflections. And how to do that is my brush is just clean and wet, like not soaking wet, but it's wet. And I'm going to just go directly underneath and try to pull out some of the color that's already there from the hill. So it's a little faint. If it's too faint, you can just do like one little quick dip into your brown and then just put a little bit under these. So I'm just gonna, I just did a quick dip in brown because you it already dried pretty fast. So you just want it to be like a nice lighter brown than what you already have. And you're basically pulling out the color underneath to reflect. Hi, Helen. Just watching now. Yeah, no worries. Um, I could try to catch you up or you can watch on replay. Totally up to you. So there's a little bit of reflection. So I just did like a quick dab in my brown to get it um, to be, but it's mostly, it's mostly watered down. So there's brown, direct brown, and then water with brown. Oh yeah, nice to say hello. While you're waiting to get loaded at the quarry. Cool. Hope you're staying warm out there. I've been cold all day. <laughs> Excited for Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. So, there we go. We got good little practice there for our reflections. How's everyone doing so far? Now we get to, um, we'll go back to our sky so we can put where our moon and our clouds are. And then we will do our trees and more reflections. So I just wanted to divide that so we knew where everything was. Um, and then we will do trees after moon and clouds. So the brush I'll use for that is a medium brush. So that'll be a good brush. Um, so let's get another medium brush. And I'm going to use white first. So I still have white here on my palette. And I'm going to wet that brush. Get a little bit of white. And now we can mark out where our moon is. So you can make it big or small, totally up to you. Start small and we're gonna keep spinning around in a circle um, till our desired length. Um, here we go. So I'm going to say, so in my original there, I have my moon slightly off to the left 
and then I'm imagining like the water, the moon here, and then it's reflecting there. So we're also going to be putting a little bit of white into our water here. So I'm gonna just go for it and put a moon. So you can start as a circle like that, and then you can fill it up with little tiny circles. So I just... <laughs> And this moon will definitely need more layers. So you can just spin around in a circle to your desired moon size. There we go. And this part, um, sometimes we can get moon happy and just like keep spinning and spinning until your moon is like so big it takes over everything. Um, just make sure you don't um, you know, like, don't worry if it's not like this, like perfect circle. Okay. Cause there's going to be clouds around it. You could always put a cloud beside somewhere and then it will look just fine. So don't worry. <laughs> Miss beginning will watch and paint later. Thank you for being here from Cornwall, Ontario. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Enjoy the video later on. Thanks for coming in to say hi. All right, so you got our moon there. We're gonna let that dry because it's gonna need another layer. And I also put in like a little bit of yellow. So we're gonna want at least two layers of white and then yellow. So that way, because there's blue underneath, if we don't do more layers of white, we'll end up getting green. So that wouldn't be cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use white and we're gonna do some clouds. So when I do clouds, I just take white and I just like scruffle them around so I just like literally just scruffle around. I know you can't see that, but I'll show you on the canvas. Um, so up and around, I didn't really touch my moon in my original, but you can. Um, so I'm gonna go to my right side and I'm going to start. So my motion I'm doing is like little tiny circles almost, like what we just did. And I'm just scruffling around. You can probably hear it the scratching zone and even though I have put paint there and it's starting to fade as I scruffle around that's cool because that's what we want then it makes clouds so I just scruffled around there and if it's like too blue or something that you know scruffle until you get your desired moon um, cloud shape there and then put a little bit of white again on top in some parts. You don't want it to be all white anyways. So something like that. Have a shape that, you know, just isn't one like ball. Spread it out, you know, make it uneven. Don't think symmetry, think the opposite. <laughs> Okay, so I have a cloud there, but I'm also going to keep extending this cloud. It's basically one big cloud and I'm putting it up and around my moon. It can go over the moon too. It's totally up to you. Just really depends on the space. So I'm just twirling around how the cloud's going. Just pushing too, like pushing um, to make that scruffling noise there. I have a literal cloud video that I made. It's just how to make clouds. So all the painting is, is just a bunch of clouds. So that you could always check out too. It's in the video section. So I got one big cloud over this moon. And I'm going to do another one underneath. Now, if you want to do more clouds or less clouds, that's totally up to you. Or no clouds, up to you. <laughs> if you want to make it um, more of like, you want to make stars kind of like more dusk than you can. Um, but I feel, you know, feel what you want. Do what you like. And it's a great video on clouds. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, they can be tricky. So don't like... Beat yourself up if you're kind of struggling or maybe you're not. Like, just, just go for it. So I just start in a spot, twirl around, just make different motions. 
So I started here, maybe I'm going down, then I'm going up. Then I'm going down, I'm going straight. Just the whole time I'm doing this too, I'm also doing little um, swirling and pushing and like scruffling it, I call it, I don't know. <laughs> I'll just keep going there until, I don't know, I'm going to say that's big enough. And I'm just adding different characters. So here I went up. So it wasn't all looking like one long shape. <laughs> and, I'll, and I always find that when I'm doing clouds, I kind of like make the ends thinner. And then like the middle parts thicker. Um, but also you can put something underneath so it's unbalanced. Diane just got home. Will this be available online for a bit? Yeah, it will be. I won't take it off, so you got lots of time. It'll be up um, as soon as I'm done the class, and it'll be on there forever. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing this later. I'm working now on lunch. Yeah, I'm so glad, Nancy. Let me know how it goes if you're doing it later on tonight. <laughs> okay, so we got those clouds there. If you have a little bit of like that bluish green mix hanging around or just blue, whatever you have on your palette that's left of the blue color can be just blue or bluish green or just blue and white, doesn't matter. Just want to add a little bit of color into the clouds so they're not just white. This will add a little bit of shading. So I just um, wet my brush and just swirled around on my how here just to kind of get a little bit of this blue so it looks like mine's like a light blue mix here and what i'm doing now is i'm focusing underneath because this part where the moon is it's going to be really bright here so just think like on the further spots it's going to be a little more like shaded so i'm just going to put it kind of more down towards the bottom and you can go up a bit you can also go down Basically look at your cloud shape and then think of like dividing it in half almost. And then to blend that you just twirl until it's blended. Kind of like how we went back and forth till it was blended. To make the cloudy effect I just twirl until it's blended. And you could use a little water in that mix too um, if, if you needed to. Just adding a little bit of color in there. It's very random. There's like really no set places for this. You kind of just have to experiment. They're always different. So I'm just basically focusing it on areas that aren't close to the moon because the moon is very bright. So say it's kind of darker towards your moon, then just, it's okay if it's a little dark towards the moon, but maybe just add a little bit of bright, just some white again in there to brighten it up. See, I am going to touch my moon. There we go. I'm doing it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just blending it, just tapping and swirling. Yeah, it's easy to get carried away and keep wanting to play, so I'm just going to stop. And just listen to yourself or take a step back from it and see if you should stop. <laughs> or, you know, take a perspective look at it, like hold it back and then see it from a different angle. So it's going to look way different. We'll have to watch later. Love this painting. Oh, yay. I'm glad you love it, Cheryl. Let me know how it goes later on. <laughs> okay, so clouds. Now we can go over the moon again. So I'm just going to use white. I cleaned my brush off because there was blue in there. So you want to make sure your brush is perfectly cleaned. So you don't want to mix blue up in this. Okay, so then I'm just going over my moon. Maybe at this point now you want to make it bigger. Maybe it's more suitable to make yours bigger. If you want it smaller, make a cloud by it. 
So there we go. We're gonna let that dry um, and we'll add some yellow on that later on. Um, that's why I kind of like called it like dusk or dawn. Um, but if you want to just make it a sun, then you can just make it a sun. <laughs> or if you want to leave it white, leave it white. Okay, so now we're going to go to our trees. So now I'm just putting all my brushes in the water I'm not using. And we're going to need on our palette some red, some brown. If you still have it, I still do. So brown, we're going to get some fall colors out now. So brown, red, and yellow. Brown, red, yellow. And put a little black on there for later. Just a dot. So I put brown, which I already had. Red, yellow, and like a dot of black. That's for later. And I'm going to get out my old scruffled brush here. It's very kind of broken up. You can see it doesn't look like the best brush to use, but it is for this technique. So there's always a good use for everything. I always keep all my brushes. <laughs> so we're going to start with this brush. Um, and oh, don't wet it, okay? Don't wet it. Um, I find these kind of brushes just hold so much water. So just... Leave it dry. We're going to do like a dry technique. We've been doing more of like wet on wet techniques for blending. Now we're going to use dry brush techniques, which is it's dry, but with paint. <laughs> it's just not wet. Okay. So scruffy brush and we're going to dab in br brown first. So I'm just tapping it. Okay. You don't need a lot of paint on there. And now you can look at your painting and think about where we will put our trees. So I'm going to start on the far ends. I made it darker here and it got lighter towards the, the middle. So I'm going to use my brown on this these sides and I'm doing it on top of my little hill. And I'm just going to hold it on an angle or full. You can just tap or go on an angle. It depends on the size. Mine's kind of big so I'm just going to use the side of mine. And I'm just going to tap up, making my trees. Just like that. Look at that. It makes a tree. <laughs> so just tap. It's okay if it has like some spaces in between that looks even better. Like this, let the brush do the work for you. And just tap it along. So I'm going to do it to about this point here. So I don't, this is going to be like that darkest point. So it's kind of like halfway across my little hill here. Um, also don't make them all the same size. So like, as you can see, I made one taller and a little smaller. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. and I'm just gonna make sure I get the edge area because there we go that way it doesn't like just look blue over there so just tap around the edge on the side awesome and I'll put like a random little brown section here maybe there we go so now we're also going to put this in the water so I'm just going to tap it down. So see the size of your tree and then go to that length. Like it doesn't have to be exact. Like it's, it's distorted, right? Like water is distorted. So just tap it down towards in the water. Oh, you're welcome, Helen. Yeah. And let me know what works best for you guys. Okay. And same thing on the other side, just make sure you reflect what you have. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's very distorted water, so. There we go. Do something like that. 
little shape as a whole. Mm -mm -mm. And now I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to wipe it off on my paper towel. Just get out some of that brown. All these colors are going to start mixing anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I just kind of wiped off a little bit of my access onto just a paper towel. And so it still has a little brown on there, that's okay. So yeah, as you can see, this brush is pretty old and frail, which is awesome for this. So it's actually just like a, from the dollar store. Like this was like one of my old paint brushes. <laughs> so I'm going into red now and I'm just doing that tapping motion. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, is anyone else frozen? Are we frozen? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know um, how to unfreeze if I am frozen. Um, I do have pretty good internet here, 5G, and it's like the one that's in the ground. So I heard it's like better for service at least, so that's good. Cool, all right. Yeah, so red, um, I'm going to move towards the center because the center is the brightest point. So I'm gonna use some red here and I'm going a little bit in between. So where are we? So yeah, I put some red in between there. I'm just tapping it, reflecting it. So now that we know to reflect, I'm just gonna do that right away. That's a lot of red there, so I can dim that down later. Um, and then I'm gonna put more red trees over here, I'm just tapping down. So let me know if you don't have a brush like this because then I can let you know what to do. Um, if you don't, like, so if you're watching later and you don't have a brush like that, um, you can just use, like, an old sponge, even. Um, or you can use, where is it? Let me find a brush that would work. You can use a filbert. You can use one of these. Because it still looks, like, frail, but not as frail. And you just tap like that. If you're watching later, no one has that. Try that out. Just an old sponge. Okay, so you can go the other side, put some red in between the brown areas, a little bit into the water. So yeah, mine was quite red over here, so I'm just going to pull that up and down so it's not as red and crazy. Um, and then some reds over here. There we go. So let's bring that closer. That's kind of hard to see from far away. Yeah, it's so cool how this makes trees, though. And yeah, just, again, make sure your trees aren't all one same shape. So I put my red by my orange, not on purpose, but it works out because now I can make orange. So literally, I'm not going to clean the brush anymore. If it's really wet and, like, has a lot of red on it, just uh, give it a tap on your napkin and then go back to it. Go in between red and yellow or just mix red and yellow. I'm just making some orange. So it's basically half and half. So I dabbed in red and yellow, but then I'm just doing it up here to, to start blending it and making an orange. And I'm just tapping because you don't want a lot of paint on the brush. So I just tap and then I go to the canvas. So it's orange can be a dark orange, a light orange, whatever orange that you like. Does not matter. And I'm just Adding in some oranges, so I'm just going on the other sides. And making some of these areas different than the other areas. Very cool. So yeah, it looks more red on mine. So I'm just going to add yellow and just put it right on. Oh, actually, it is more orange when I look up close. Just on the camera, it looks red, but it's orange. I'm just trying to brighten it up more so you can see it. So we have, like, brown to red to orange. And you can put the other colors randomly, too, in the other tree areas because we all know that in nature, it's not just, like, perfect, um from one color to the other. So don't worry if you have other colors over there. 
And if you like it like that, then cool. Okay, so now I'm just wiping out some of that excess paint on the brush again, on the napkin. I'm gonna just use direct yellow. And I'm just tapping there, direct yellow. And just on a random spot of my plate so I don't have a lot of paint on here. Ramil, hope we get to see this live later. Love the way you are guiding and would love to do it myself later. Yeah, it's going to be up later. So as soon as I'm done this, um, Ramel, I'm going to post it and then it'll just be in my video section. You can watch it anytime because I'm not taking it off ever. <laughs> Maybe one day, but no, that's going to be a far away day. Okay, so yeah, in yellow, and you can go right across now and blend them together. So you might see a little bit of oranges in there, and that's cool. Um, just because we didn't clean our brush. So that's awesome. Just again, make sure that they're not all the same, and that they are reflecting. So up and down. Cool little trees. And to blend it in areas, you can just tap right on top into another color. And you can still see our um, little hills in between, but we're gonna bring them back. So don't worry if you lost them. <laughs> in the middle too, um, so just wipe off some of the axis and just put a little bit of white, um, dab it in your yellow. And then just put a little bit of white like right in the center so it's just different there so i just put a little bit of white um, with yellow if you also have like gold or something that would look cool too but yeah there so in the center i just made it a little bit brighter with some just white white and a little yellow So what did you guys think of the brush, that technique? There you go. Okay, so don't put this in the water yet, just in case we need it. So just put it to the side. I don't think we will, but <laughs> just in case. Because once it's really wet, then it's just really hard to get it to do that technique. So now I'm putting back in brown. So I'm just putting a little bit of brown on my palette. I'm gonna bring back the hills that I have there. So I'm just using like a medium or small brush again. Good, lots of thumbs, hearts up, awesome. Hi babe, my fiance, Ryan, he's in here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put, I'm gonna go over. If they're like really wet, then don't do this because then you'll end up blending. But see, I'm just kind of bringing it back to life. Bring back the hills. Might not be able to do it if it's super wet. If it's a little wet, that's okay. Just bring it back. And if you like it how it is, you don't have to do this. So I'm just bringing it back, using that brown again and going over. If you can't see it, then take a look at mine and then you can just make that those two hills again. Okay, so I brought back out the hills. And now you can see that it is reflecting the water. We're gonna add more to that water too, to make it even more reflective. Hello, Lindsay. How's it going? <laughs> okay, underneath, we're gonna put some black. It's like a little bit of black underneath. I just put black, I didn't clean the brush, I just dipped in the black. And I'm putting black like right underneath at the bottom of my hill. All the way, um, just on the hills, not all the way across. So just the hills. 
fits darker over there and this is brighter. So I don't want black there. <laughs> it's a little bit of black on the bottom of the hills. You can blend it into the brown too if you see if it's like too much. I sometimes just use my finger and blend it. <laughs> <laughs> That way it's just a little darker under there. It's more of like a sh shadow effect. And that was a mistake. That's okay. <laughs> I can always fix it. Make it into more of an extended hill. And I'm just fixing this. Don't mind me there. Tapping on top. Cool. How you guys doing? I want to get out um, the medium brush again. Just make sure it's nice and cleaned off. And we'll go back up to this moon or sun. I just put a little bit, I mix a little bit of white and yellow. So it's like just a faint yellow. See that color there? Mostly white, tad of yellow. And I'm just going to put that on to my moon. Make sure you stay in the white area because if you go off then you'll get green. If you get green, um, you can wipe it off with a paper towel that's clean or you can just put a cloud there. <laughs> but there, now you can see it really pops out and you can always take a bit of um, that pale yellow that you made and even just give a little Taps in between these tops of trees just to brighten up even more. And that's just with the side of the brush. It's kind of like a bonus. Yours might already be really bright there, so you don't necessarily have to do that. Okay, I'm just clean that off again. So now I want to add um, some white into the water. We can start to make more like reflections and stuff into the water. So I'm gonna get a white wherever it went. There it is. I lose everything <laughs> in my art room. <laughs> I just got like a new shelf. So I'm gonna put all my stuff in a nice shelf area and then just organize, keep my class stuff separate from my project stuff. I basically use the same paint. I just um, keep it separate so I have enough for like classes and then enough for myself. Cool. All right. So we're going to just do white and we're going to make um, some like just bigger sections here in the water of the imitation of clouds. So if you see a cloud, you're going to want to put this back and forth motion of white here. So I got cloud and then it's reflecting. It doesn't have to look like the cloud, just the distortion, right? So then you're just kind of blending that in again. We're so pro at blending by now. <laughs> I can use a little bit of water, right? And then that helps blend it nice. So got a cloud and a reflection. And then a little bit over here. So I'm just looking where mine are. You can just see where yours are too. So cloud is here. Put some white there. And a little bit here would look good. Right in that center point. Once I kind of marked it out, that's when I use water and just blend it in. Go back and forth. a little bit of water but dab on the napkin so it's not like soaking hi jess there we go so this is really going to bring that water to life mm -mm -mm. awesome i'm seeing some heart perfect so then we're going to go up um, back underneath of here, we're gonna use use a small brush or like something really thin. Um, so maybe the, a nice brush to use could be like a flat brush. 
So then you have a nice flat, small edge. So I'm just clean that one off because I had black on that one. And then I'll just use some white. And underneath of the hill, I'm going to put some like thin white lines. So I'll just start with that one. I'll try to bring it closer so you can see. Looks great. I join in, but I just got home from work. Ooh, do it later. <laughs> got an old canvas come going around. Okay, so then I'm gonna start making like random thin lines here on the trees or under them. On the trees, but in the water. <laughs> Or you can see it upside down. <laughs> and I'm going all the way down to where my trees end. I'm just pulling out thin lines here. So the way to make it really easy is just basically having it watered down. Make water with water. Um, and I just like to do it in like sections going across. So I did some thin white lines over here, but now I'm going to move in this middle area and then I'll go over here. So I'm just using like that flat part of the brush and I'll go right underneath of where my hill areas are. And so it's not so white, I blend it, right? Like I just go back and forth. So it is mostly white, but we're also catching some of the colors that are there, which is cool. That's what we want. And that that how I get it that's how I get it so thin because I just keep pulling it out. Rosa, hello Rosa. So I get another section there. Let me move back. And then I'll go to this side. I always just use a dab of white and then I just keep spreading it out until I get more white. If you put too much white, it'll become thick. So you just, basically it's very thinned out white. You don't need a lot on your brush. You just go back and forth, spreading out the paint. You'll get some nice reflections under there. I keep touching the side. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kind of doing like, and then you could also, if you see any that are really white, you can just go back and forth very lightly just to blend again, because that's like basically the best way to blend. And then I'm just going to put a little more under here. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Can't wait to see everybody's. So yeah, that's it for my steps. That just like flew right by. Woo. You guys are probably pro painters by now. <laughs> so yeah, there it is. So I'll just go in and out. <laughs> okay, that was way too fast. So yeah, we have our sun or moon. Mine's looking more like day, and that's cool. So yeah, you can experiment with this, um, these techniques and this type of painting here. It's very simple um, and straightforward for the most part, and you can experiment and make it in different colors, right? Like you could do sunset with sunset water. You could do night sky, like blacks. You can totally do the same painting here, but you can change the colors. Maybe you just have green trees. So that's what's fun is that you can change this. Now that you've learned how to do something like this, then you can change it. Thanks, Adam. So I hope you had fun, everybody. It was so nice to come on, hang out with you guys today. And it's lovely Thursday. We're going to have a... Hope everybody has like a great Thanksgiving. Um, and this is, I'll keep doing my lives. Um, I like to do them once a month at least um, as a thank you to everybody who joins in um, and supports me on my page. I'm just so happy to be able to offer this for everybody. Um, I know how good it makes me feel and I hope it makes you feel just as good. 
Um, it's really good for our mental health too, which is super important. So yeah, don't, don't feel pressured. You know, you don't always have to make it look the exact same as mine because we're all different. So just hope you had fun. Let me know if you have any questions later on and I can um, help you out. Awesome. You're welcome, Elaine. Good. Yeah, that's a really fun way. And it's like the best way to do it. It makes them look so real. <laughs> You're welcome, Sa Santa or C Sina. Sorry if I said it wrong. Yeah. All right. So I'll post this up now and have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye.